Hey and welcome. This is episode two of a Note for God podcast. Before we get started, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at a note for God. Screenshot and tag me on Instagram. Also, don't forget to share this episode with others. I truly appreciate that. I also feel that each episode will help someone good news the podcast is already on itunes y'all when i got that notification i was so super excited same thing it's on stitcher spotify and i also upload the audio on youtube Like I stated in the previous episode, I will always end the episode with Matthew 25, 23 and a segment called A Note for God. Don't forget, if you want to participate in that segment, email me at anoteforgod at gmail.com and in the subject line, write A Note for God segment. You can also DM me and I will also put those in the podcast. Simply write three to four sentences thanking God for what he has done, writing a love letter to God, or praying for someone. Put your name and the city and state, and I will start featuring them in the podcast. I had an amazing feedback on the first episode, which I'm super excited I read comments that said, your voice is so calm, your voice is so soft, you sound so good, you sound like you rehearsed a lot. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that comment. I'm going to take it as a compliment. Let me tell you a little secret. Lean in, listen up, turn up the volume. I don't always sound that calm. (laughs) The reason I sounded that way was because I was recording at 10.30 at night and my kids were sleeping and I didn't want to wake them up. I recorded my office in the closet in my office with the door closed. So I didn't want them to come in here, start knocking. Secret number two, I did not edit the podcast either. I simply hit record, done, and then I uploaded it to Bus Sprout, which is the platform that I use to host my podcast. And honestly, for right now, I'm not planning to add an intro. I'm not pl- planning either to pay someone to edit the podcast. It is what it is because I believe the message is important. And those little details we can do later, right? In a couple months, perhaps. Some days I will not sound so calm relax and days not so much you never know stay tuned um again don't forget to screenshot and tag me on instagram that you are listening to this episode so let's get started on today's episode which i am so excited to talk about this we will be talking about apostle paul what who is he you might know who he is or you may not know and that is okay girl i did not know who he was either i'm just gonna be honest i'm not gonna share your cold stuff i'm not gonna lie to you and say yes i knew who he was since the beginning no i did not know i knew who jesus was i knew who mary was i heard about daniel and the lion's den of course now i know more detail of who he is and why he was there i also had heard of ruth and esther and the only reason i knew who joseph was was because i think disney made a movie about him i'm being honest that is really the only reason right do not be ashamed of what you do not know you open up your bible and you start to read Again, I'm here to tell you, I didn't really know much about the Bible. And that's what I told you in my first podcast or my first episode. But now, what, a year and a half later, obviously, I know just a little bit more because I'm taking time to read the Bible and take notes and take time with God 
to really understand scripture. All right. Paul has to be one of my favorites in the Bible. He really is. Why? Because of his boldness, his confidence. He was never afraid to face an issue head on. He didn't really care of what others had to say. He was here to do God's work. And I just love that about him. He wrote 13 books of the New Testament. You might be thinking, well, who was he then? Or what did he do? I'm going to give you the grace short notes because I want you to open up your Bible and read for yourself who he was. I want you to read those lines and really understand where he was coming from. All right. So let me break it down to you. Obviously, I'm not going to go into full detail because I really want you to open up your Bible. Paul used to be called Saul. All right. Let's get that first. Saul was a Christian killer. Yes, you heard that. You heard that right. He went around killing Christians. He was on his way to Damascus to arrest anyone who believed in Christ. Now, this is Bible scripture. Acts 9, 3 states, As he was approaching Damascus on this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He was then blinded for three days and did not eat or drink. He was then healed by Ananias. Saul then started to preach about Jesus and he tried to meet with believers, but most of them were afraid to meet with him because they were like, hey, you were just killing us yesterday and now you want us to be around you? We are not too sure about that, right? So it is not until you get to Acts 13, 9, where Saul is now called Paul, all right? Again, I want you to get your Bibles and read Acts 9 to through 13 to get more detail those are the short version notes of grace right there's more to it but at least you got who he is right paul used to be called saul and saul used to be a christian killer all right he had an encounter with god and he changed a total side note but this is for you and me and everyone else. Never believe what others say about scripture. Not me, not the person that you follow on Instagram, not even your pastor, not your friend who claims that she reads the Bible all day long. Because people are quick to believe what others say without even looking up scripture. Hear me, side eye me if you want to. But always go to your Bible and read it for you yourself to say, you know what, that person was right. Confirmation or wait, hold up. The way the person said it was out of scripture, right? So please do me a favor, always read the scripture, especially if other people are quoting it, just to confirm, right? I'm going to quote a few verses just so you can hear his boldness because I really just love the way he says certain things because he really doesn't care about hurting your feelings and not in a bad way don't don't take it to a bad way let's go to Romans 9 20 he says no don't say that who are you a mere human being to argue with God Sure, the thing that was created, say to the one who created it, why have you made me this? I just love it. I, I love the boldness. The second one, Romans eleven nineteen. Well, you may say, those branches were broken off to make room for me. Yes, but remember, those branches were broken off because they didn't belong in Christ. And you are there because you do believe. 
So don't think highly of yourself, but fear what could happen. For if God did not spare the original branches, he won't spare you either. He's not saying this to scare people. Well, maybe he is a saint just a little bit. Because I truly feel that you really have to be obedient to God, right? Because there's always consequences. If you're a parent, you tell your child, don't do this or there will be consequences. That is just what God does as well, right? He is our our father. He will say, don't do it, but you have free will, but understand the consequences. The next one, Romans 12, 3. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourself by the faith God has given us. Okay, going to the next one, 2 Corinthians eleven nineteen. 19. After all, you think you're so wise, but you enjoy putting up with fools. In other words, let me just keep it real. That's what he's saying, right? And that's what I love about him when I read the scripture um, that he writes because he's not sure about anything. He's just saying it how it is so you are able to understand it. And a lot of people don't like that, right? You know someone who whether it's at work or your family members or friends who it's like don't tell me the truth I don't want to hear it just pretend and let's sugarcoat it right and then you have other people who love to be told the truth they don't get their feelings hurt they love when people are honest with them right and let me go to the next one Galatians 1 10. Obviously, I'm not trying to win approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. This verse really touched my soul, really touched me profoundly because of what he says. I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. For me, I took it as I fear God. If he's telling me to do X, Y, and Z, I need to do it, right? Because I want his approval. I don't care what other people say. That doesn't really matter. I'm not here for that. I am here to win the approval of only God. I try to do something every day to make God proud right? Whether it's sharing the gospel with others, praying for others, sharing my testimony, something that at the end of the day, God is going to say, good job, good job, well done. And the last one is Galatians 6, 3. If you think you are too important to help someone, you're only fooling yourself. You're not that important. And I, I kid you not, every time I read it, Uh, what he writes it's like I smile and I laugh because I was like I just love that boldness this really goes back to the basic rules that you were taught as a child treat everyone equally right you treat the janitor just like you treat the CEO everyone is the same regardless of the position that they have whether in the job or or you're walking around somewhere right you are really becoming a servant. You're really becoming a servant of other people. Uh, like I said, I love Paul's honesty and confidence. I think I, I love reading what he says and what he writes because I see a lot of myself in Paul. I am also very bold. I'm honest. I don't sugarcoat anything really. And I really say it how it is. And I never say it in a bad way or to hurt anyone's feelings. It's, let's just say it how it is, right? (laughs) And because of that, I usually encounter two types of people. The one that is glad I'm honest and to the point and says, I appreciate your honesty. Wow, 
you're just very bold. And then the other one that looks at me like, why didn't you just lie to me instead? Instead of lying to me, right? I, that's just who I am. And maybe that's why I enjoy reading Paul because I say, hey, God made me this way. God made me to be bold, confident, not sugarcoat things. I'll say it how it is, but I'm also here to help you. Because many people try to see things that are wrong with you. And you may think to yourself, but I'm fine. I'm happy the way I am. It's because they see something in you that they cannot do for themselves or be in themselves, right? Perhaps they wish to be bold. Perhaps they wish to be confident. And they see you and they're like, well, that's something bad right but it's truly not bad it's who you are that is how God created you to be right so I get so happy and so excited when I read Paul because I said hey if Paul was like that and he was amazing so am I right Uh, I want you to open up your Bibles and read the verse I gave you and start taking notes I really want you to Read those verses and break them down and perhaps, you know, start reading the book of Acts, which is also very amazing. And then go from there so you can see who Paul was, right? As you're reading those Bible verses, do me a huge favor. Tag, uh, take a picture and tag me because I just love seeing other people read scriptures especially scripture that I quote or that I say you know as an educator uh, being an educator for 14 years in the classroom for eight currently a high school counselor it's like going back to the teach uh, the teaching uh, in the classroom and giving my students homework so I, I really love that so let's go to a note for God segment uh, God, I want to pray for families today. I want you to pray for the husband so they get clarity and create a vision for their families, especially since we just started the year, January 2020. I want to pray for the wives so they get wisdom and seek you for answers first and not seek others seek you first i want to pray for their children may you always watch over them and cover them that they pray as a family every single day and they teach their children about the love of god all right and i'm ending the episode with matthew 25 23 because like i stated every single day i do something And I want to do something to make God proud because when I close my eyes in this world and open up my eyes to see God, my father, the one who has always shown unconditional love, I want him to reach his hand towards me and say, well done, good and faithful servant. I hope you read more about who Paul was tag me on those pictures so we talk again